In this video, we're going to create a walk cycle in Maya, and we're going to use one of the Autodesk character generator characters. So I've got some character designs. I've got some generated here. So once you've designed it, you can generate it with the um, parameters you want to use. So for example, this one here has blend shape and quads, and it's also got several formats in there that would be useful to me. So if I just click on here for download, that will turn up in my downloads folder. Um, so if I show that folder, uh, it's just still downloading one of them, which I uh, I'll ignore for now. But I'm going to cut those, and then I can find the folder I'm working to, which is in here, and I'm going to paste those into my scenes folder. I'm going to make a new folder in there um, for characters. And then paste in the ones that I'm going to work with. So I can see the one that was quite large. So the one which had multiple formats of the same character had um, is, is the largest. So uh, and some of the other ones are the free ones. So if you use low crowd. Um, you will get free characters. This one here at 47 megabytes is uh, one of the larger ones. So if I extract those files here, uh, extract it to a folder, um, I can see inside of there I've got the FBX file, 3 ds Max file, a Unity file, um, and a Maya binary. So those are the formats I'm going to work with. So, but um, in this case, I'm working in Maya, so I will open the Maya binary for this one. Um, so if I flip over to Autodesk Maya, um, open the scene. Now I need to set the project, so I'll make sure I'm in the right project. Uh, week five, Maya, and I'll set that one there. So setting the project again is really important. Um, it does allow you to link the textures. So in this case, it's color JPEG, um, which is the uh, textures that we use on this character, um, and it won't have to be relinked every time. Now this this come in in the top view. If I zoom out slightly, I should see a, get a better look. But I'm in the orthographic view. So if I press space, it goes back to perspective space top y so you can change the panels up here as well um, perspective or orthographic um, in this case we're going to actually look at the side view because uh, we're working on um, a walk cycle so we can see that from the side in this view if I turn on the the textures there so I can see the textures if I want to hide the textures I can just turn that on and off temporarily. So to use a, I'm just deleting the lights in there, um, because the lights are really lit for this position, um, if I want to use a motion capture file, I can go to Windows Content Browser, and there are some inside the, um, inside the examples within this content browser. So we've got examples here. If I drop down this menu, I go to animations, motion captures, and FBX. So I'll just slide that across for now. So there's quite a few in there. Um, and I'm going to start with the walk. So I can either drag that into the scene, or I'm going to right click it and press import. And you can see here the um, it does have a message saying up 30 frames per second. This is running at 24 frames a second. So my character is set up slightly wrong. Um, I'm not going to worry about that, but actually, if you are doing motion capture, you should try and match the frame rate of your project. Um, otherwise, you can get some interpolation problems uh, with that as well. Uh, so that's done. So I can see this skeleton is walking along. This character here also has a skeleton. So I can turn that on by pressing the X-ray skeleton. Um, 
But what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the animation on this walk clip here to drive the character. So if I click on the HIK window, I can then just stop the animation or rewind it. Um, select which character I'm working with. The walk one is the walk character. Uh, and this one here is uh, the one that I've downloaded from the Autodesk Generator website. Um, I'm just going to give it the name of the file that I downloaded, the character CS2, um, because all of the characters I download from the Autodesk website will be called character. So there's a chance you'll overwrite the character in that way. So if I click click source, it will allow me to define what the source of this character is. So the source animation for this will be this clip that I've downloaded, a rather um, uh, walk with bravado perhaps, so kind of slightly leaning back, but that's something we can, we can fix um, at a later date. I really want to walk through the process of using the time editor here to make a walk cycle that, that goes further than just these few steps that we've got here. So the first thing I'm noticing is this ground plane here, this is a zero line in the in the scene, um, it's a little bit low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through here, I've got a lot of different um, elements in here. Now you may not have these if you have uh, just the low resolution or the crowd resolution, but the H is high resolution, M, medium, um, L low and C crowd. So there is kind of a a descending uh, level of detail in there. So you, we can actually just um, I can work with these. So I'm just going to keep the high resolution ones at the moment. So that's high res. Um, that's the main body. Low wig. So I'm going to hide the other ones by selecting the channel box editor here and adding those. So create a layer from selected. So like I say, you may not need to do this um, because you, you may only just have downloaded the low resolution one. Um, so you can ignore that step if you want to. And next I'm going to raise up the character slightly. So I'm going to click on this master node here. So this is all the mesh, but the master node contains the skeleton inside it. So it's got hips, spine, legs. So we can see all that light up in green there. If I select the master node there, I can then raise that up slightly so it's going to start in a slightly different position. So now the feet will be on the ground. So going under the ground is a bit problematic. So I've literally just raised that up. Um, you can keyframe that if you want, but um, that will stay in that position. So as I scrub through the timeline, I see that is holding on that, that zero point. So now what I want to do is bake that animation onto the character I'm using. So at the moment the source is this alternative clip. So the walk on this skeleton is being retargeted onto the character I'm using. So to do that, I click on the blue icon here, and I'll say bake. And in this case, I'm going to do bake to control rig. So I select bake to control rig and that will run for each of the frames and that will actually create a keyframe on all of the parts of the control rig. And you can see along here, they all show up. That will move the same way. Um, if you've played around with the control rig or done some animation with that, you'll know how we can manipulate that at a later date. So using the middle mouse button, I can just bring this one across. Um, and then I'm going to select this middle icon here. Now I can see that it's not selecting all of the nodes on this. Um, and that's because it's selecting single body parts. I want to select full body. And so that will mean it will select the whole skeleton or the whole control rig um, at once. So that means I'm, I'm actually using that all at the same time. Now in my window here, I've got the time editor. If you don't have that, you can go to Animation Editors, and find the Time Editor, and select that there. Um, I will then, from the Time Editor, I'm going to use this icon here. This one 
is if I get rid of that um, window there it will show up but this one is to create a clip from the selection this is why I've made sure I've selected all of the control rig with that one full body and then I'm going to click on this one here which will create the animation clip for me so now you can see this, in this non-linear editor I can I can move this around so the start of the animation can be at different parts of the timeline and what I'm going to do now is I can see there's a start to the walk here um, and I can see there the left foot is passing the right um, so that's quite a good pose to pick up and there again the left pose is passing the right so if I want to make that, I'll just check the beginning of it, it seems fairly similar um, there again we've got the left clip passing the right, so I'm going to take it to that one, so the foot is just before the heel is just before it crosses over the next part now we can cut the end off of this clip here. We can do trim end to current time. If we do that one, it will just cut that, that last section off, and that will do the front bit. Um, so I want to get a matching pose. So the right foot, left foot, there. So again, this foot is just going to go about past there. Now if I want to trim, I can drag like this, and that will just trim to that point. And then I have this single clip here. Now this clip is still based on the animation that we've just baked to the character there. So what I'm going to do, um, and it does have the extra keyframes in, so we've got all the keyframes in there. So what I'm going to do is now right click this one, and again I'm going to bake it, but I'm going to bake it to a new clip. Um, you can delete the original clip as you do this, but I tend not to. Um, so I've baked that there and now I'll mute that track so that track won't do anything but you can see there this track is, is moving along um, now the next thing we can do is look at the attributes of this clip go to the attribute editor here um, and the attributes are really important well the one I'm looking for is the loop so the loop after mode I can click on that and I can say loop progressive so um, I'll just go into that slightly. So the loop progressive should make this clip um, move forward of that position rather than just come back to the start position and, and repeatedly do that animation. Um, if I do loop progressive, the character should walk forward. Now following that, I'm going to go to loop mode. So now when I trim this clip, it should make that go forward of that part of the animation. So I'll just drag that along. So it's got these little triangles on there. If you haven't got the triangles, it's not actually going to loop. And we can see from that transition there, there is a slight jump. Um, but for the sake of this um, animation, we will just play that through and we can see the way that this is taking the first motion of that and the first position of this character and actually making it um, continue walking for a substantial amount of time. Now we could make that a considerably larger number and so just wrote, bring that out slightly more. Uh, let's try and zoom out and bring that along. Um, we should be able to get that character walking for considerable pace. Now there may be some issues, it may over time raise just go slightly up but it seems to be holding fairly well um, but I can see there yes it is climbing slightly um, and as the animation goes more and more forward it is causing certain issues so it's not perfect in any way but it will if you get a really good loop cycle walk cycle then you will be able to make that continue um, as far as you want now there's another way of working with this. You can, um, and this is quite useful to know about. So I'm just going to copy and paste that, and it puts it onto a new track. I've got a couple of tracks that I'm not using, so I'll highlight those, right click, and delete those tracks. Um, and then I'll bring this back to this part here. So you can see that that 
is probably going to provide quite a weird animation. Um, so you can see that's changed it quite a lot because I've got two animations playing at once. So I'm going to mute that first one. That will take us back to the the original clip just on that track. So we can add animation on top of our clip in that way. So I'm just going to bring that down back to the original clip itself and select it and copy paste and that puts it on a new track. But I want that to be on the same track so I'm bringing that around in that way and I can see as I move through these um, that they're in the same position. They've kind of got the same keyframes um, as I play through them. Uh, so this time what I want to do is to make that character start on this clip, start from the end of the last one. So the position should be the same. So if I highlight this one, I'll right click it, I can click on relocate um, and then I can say match relocators. So I'll let go of that here. Um, and now this is probably the tricky part. It's not actually very tricky but I can um, click on control reference and I can then find the last one on the list here control hips okay so that is right in the center of this character and that controls the whole skeleton so control hips is the effect I'm using this and I put that into the match object um, I'm going to go through here and just say I've actually selected match time which is the end of the first clip so we want to use that point here on the last frame of that clip to position this clip in that space the other thing I've done, I've turned rotation off. If I turn rotation off, hopefully it won't start um, walking up off the, into the into the air. Um, so that's quite a useful one to know about. Sometimes the foot would rotate slightly and it would um, increase over time. So I'm just using the translation position as we go forward. Um, and with that set up, I can press match. You can see that jumps forward. So that should make that position of that clip match with the previous clip. Um, still a slight edit I need to do to the that jump cut, but that will actually allow me to move through these clips, have a second clip come in, um, and potentially have a different clip. The character might turn right or up or down, um, and I can look at the content browser find another clip that I might want to have afterwards. Um, so I'm going to say walk uh, turn 180. I'm going to get the character to walk back the other way. So I can import that one. Again I've got a slight mismatch. Um, so I've got that turn around on that character again. So that clip's working. Um, what I can do now, if I turn that one off, I can then try and use that clip, that walk turnaround, um, to make this character turn on itself. So if I go back to the human IK, I can set the character to be controlled by the new clip. Um, I can just slightly zoom out there to get rid of that grid. Um, and what I should be able to do is the same thing again. I can bake that to my control rig. And that will run through all of the frames again and apply that to my character. Just escape there. Okay, that'll stop. Um, so it's adding in keyframes where there was no motion. So that was um, inefficient. Um, but what I want to do is make sure I get the right step point. So this is where I have to make sure I remember which foot was going forward. Um, but to start with what I will do, I'll bring this into my timeline. So again, selecting all of the control effectors there. I can then create a clip from my selection. That brings it in here. Uh, and at this point, I can turn my timeline back on. So I'm turning the timeline back on. 
and the control rig is what's driving that. So I'll just check where that ends. So that's the left foot passing the right foot. Um, so if I go through here, see there's a point where the left passes the right. And so I want to do that. I can go from probably about there. Forward one frame. Leave that one on. So now with that selected, I can trim and take it back round to where we're walking the other way. And I am going to give it a reasonable amount of distance again so that I've got a decent amount of animation to play with um, in case I, I just want to change that slightly. Again, that will change as I, I move around. So in this case, I'm not going to bake this animation here, this animation clip. Um, I'm just going to drag it along the timeline and put it next to this clip here. So I've got the two clips of walk cycle and this animation clip here. And this is useful to have the extra frames because I will be able to put in a transition. But I do have to do the match for that again. And I should be able to right click, relocate, match relocators. So uh, let's make sure I've got this one. Um, Control hips, use the root and then rotation none full. So I've got that moving. There is a slight glitch in there, and you can see that's really very noticeable. Um, this one was slight. Well, it depends on the angle. I can see a big jump there now. Um, on the shoulder, this one the head takes a totally different stance. Um, but it does carry on through rotate and walk back and this is bringing the sequence together so if I then go back into here and if I trim this one across the top of the other one I should be able to get a transition between that it doesn't have to be long it's best not to do it very long um, but you'll see now that fades into the other animation and that makes it a lot neater so that's an advantage of keeping the keyframes um, and not not baking that so I'll just zoom that out slightly, uh, rewind and play. And that's uh, an edit of the two clips together uh, and it starts building up my scene with that. So if we look at that in this slightly different view, the perspective view, we should be able to see how that comes together in a scene. So there my camera hasn't quite got a long enough view so I'll select the camera and change the far clip plane which was very low um, and now I should be able to see at all all zoom points um, but in the perspective view I'll be able to see that at different angles and see that character walk around um, and then it will just take a little bit of adjustment using animation layers if I want to. So that's the final final thing that I'm going to do on this one. So that's the principle of making a non-linear edit using animation clips. Um, it's a real swagger on that character. and uh, But it does hold throughout the whole piece. And again, I'll just shorten the animation loop um, down. So I'm just seeing the motion that helps me quite a lot. Look at it at the different angles. Some other angles you may see different problems come up. But uh, choose your clips wisely. Have, try and have a long handles on them so you can get a small fade to make them work well. Um, but that should allow you to be able to put a range of animations together.